We're going to talk about Esther. All right? And our chairman has already read from Esther chapter 4, from verse 9 to 17, a very important passage of scripture. And I want us to collect, engage our minds. All of us are involved, men as well as, as well as women, the whole society, the whole community. As a matter of fact, before I pray, let me just let you understand this. I understand that my purpose in ministry is to be a game changer. This is one of the reasons that I am very intentional in what I say and in what I do. Even sometimes I may appear to be a comic. I want you to bear in mind that that, that comedy is intentional because this is what happens in the field of academics. If you teach with humor, people remember the humor and they remember what was taught. That is, so I want you to understand in everything that has been done, it must be done to the glory of God. And we need to awaken a community. We as a people, and do me a favor, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not racial, and I don't preach racialism, but there's a reality of us black people need to wake up to certain things. Seriously. And I want this message that I'm going to share as the Lord has deposited in my spirit, and I want him, by his Holy Spirit, to release it today about this young lady. All right? Her name is Esther. Let's just talk about today about transitioning. Transitioning. That's a nice word. Going from here to there. From where you were to where you ought to be. Now, Ladies, that's your privilege. You could fix up yourself and nice yourself. God has made you all beautiful. And I thank God, apart from the fact that, I mean, God has blessed me with a wife and three wonderful girls, I have a special respect for women. And my mother who has gone on, and my sisters, two of them have gone ready to the beyond but there are others, those who are here women today I respect you and I stand there again and I want to apologize on our men's behalf so I'm standing here in proxy because I know we have not always been as wonderful as we should have been and that is simply we have done some Things that have not been very pleasant. God placed us here as your protectors. And some of us were your intimidators. I ask your forgiveness. And there's something that I'm very serious about. When we shut our doors at nights, it is intended to shut out the evil that prowls the darkness. But sometimes... It seems as though when the doors are being shut, you're shutting in the evil on the inside. And Mark, you, I know what I'm saying. I'm asking your forgiveness because believe you me, if we don't break the cycle of evil, if we don't get past some of these things that have harassed us, our lives will always be living in the shadows of somebody else. As a people, we're constantly having to be copycat copycatting other people. Where, where others see, it's so we have to do. Not finding our own niche in Jesus. God, hear us. So here is this lady. And before I get to the text, let me give you the poetic factor of it. Of a, from a young girl threatened to a threatened nation's triumph. A young Jewish orphan whose parents had died, was adopted by her cousin, told her identity, hide. She ascended to position as queen of the empire. She outstripped all contestants and won the king's desire. But sooner than late, Queen E is aware it's way beyond beauty. Mordecai, her cousin, reminds her of her God-assigned 
duty. Esther rose to the occasion, putting aside her natural wish, and as a woman of purpose, said, if I perish, I perish. Truth behind all this, Haman the Agagite made the king an offer. He'll personally, he'll be personally responsible for being the Jews' destroyer. One is obligated to ask, who, what, when, where, why, and how? All because to the arrogant Haman, Mordecai just would not bow. Mordecai was ignored while the rewards went to Haman. Xerxes' assassination, both Mordecai uncovered the plan. It's like the cliche, the, the cliche we use in these modern days. God healed the sick, but doctor get the praise. Unknown to one and all, he whose covenant with Israel keep was in the night disturbing King Xerxes in his sleep. It's unfortunate only under pressure that he'll decide to look. Calls for his researchers to check the records in a book. There are those who would argue this is mere coincidence. <laughs> but believers are convinced this divine providence. Hang, Haman hanged on his own gallows 75 feet from the dust while Xerxes gave Esther wealth laid up for the just. From orphan to being queen of the Persian Empire, here Esther once acquired Jew, now her soul is on fire. But beyond Mordecai's loyal promotion, the king delights to honor the eternal author of the story is behind directing all the drama. And Father, let, O oh God, the words of our mouth, let it be a word from you, a word in season. Let the, the meditation of our hearts, the things, O oh God, that we ponder on, the things, O oh God, that we lie in our beds and we toss and wouldn't sleep because they're harassing us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bring us deliverance as you did in this today's scenario. Thank you. Thank you as you speak into our hearts and lives through Jesus Christ our Savior. And all the people together say, Amen. Amen. And so we're talking about transitioning from obscurity to royalty. Do me a favor. We got, they, they, you don't just jump from one to the next. Transitioning takes time and place. And Esther is a shining example of that. I want you to watch her story, all right? So begin to, um, let me give you the introduction. Statistically, the records suggest that we don't generally handle transitioning well, all right? But let's give, up, give ourselves some credit. We once went through potty training, right? And today, we learn. Praise God. So we could, we could transit. We could do transition. Israel didn't do transition too well. From, the, from when they came out of Egypt. And they went through the wilderness. All right? Into the promised land. On the journey they malfunction, they complain, they fret, they fume, they do all kind of things. They went from point A to point B, but they did not do it well. Things that were happening to them, they didn't understand that the things were designed to shape them for a different type of life. You see, they were slaves for over 430 years. And having that slavish mentality... They have to now understand how they must reign and rule. But that process, so the same is true in relation to many who have heard the gospel. And I want to watch and see what happens. Jesus is the one who said this. All right? Some hear the word. Right? And they're glad. And then the 
birds of prey just come sweeping down and snatch the wood from them. Now, think of it. Think of the crusade. Think of what has been shared. The word came out with power and anointing. But it didn't last as long as this genie fire. There's another group. All right? As they heard the word, or oh, they received it, gladness. <laughs> and they were singing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. But as when the fires and the heat of persecution came down on them, they wilted under the heat because they had no depth to sustain them. Do my favor. That is group number two. Group number three heard the word, received it, and with gladness were going on. Oh, I'm marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, and going. But after time, when the cares and the riches of this world got into their spirit, it sucked the energy out of the world. And they got back to the things that they once were doing. Do me a favor. Are you seeing people who identify with this? No. I say this is crude math. This is crude data. Crude mathematics. We don't have that really such thing as crude data. Data must be data. But we're taking it crudely. Jesus said, if this is what happens, yet there are those who hear the word, receive it. Oh yes, but because they were planted in good soil, that word, the seed, germinate and grew into a herb, a shrub, and a mighty tree. Now if you take the crude statistics, that's one in four. So if you take the negative side, it is saying, 75% of us are not transitioning right. We, they all heard the word. They all heard it. The word was declared. Right? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach good tidings on the mountains. They all heard it. But it's one in four that will transit across that era properly. Now do me a favor. Whether one takes it from a spiritual, political, psychological, sociological, or else, Esther is a shining example. She took ad the adversity in her life. Yes, she was. She took the adversity in her life and by what she could only credit to her unshakable faith. No, mark you. In the unseen hand because nowhere in the book of Esther God is mentioned. Nowhere. Here might be another surprise to you. She did fasting, but no is mentioned about prayer. Prayer is assumed. Check the 10 chapters. But she and Mordecai believed in the unseen hand of the providential care of the unnamed God who she handled transitioning in an exemplary manner. So let's see what we can learn from this young beautiful orphan. All right? First thing we are going to think about. Folks, do me a favor. You're going to turn adversity. You hear me? Turn negative reality into potential. Right? Substantive potentiality. Turn it. Do me a favor. If we had the time, if time was not a factor, and we allow everybody to come up here and take this mic, and give your life story. Look, all of you will hear bawling. And, oh God, I saw the net was so hard. Thing. Oh, we would have been doing that. If you hear some people's like story. So don't give up yet until you hear somebody else's story. You hear me? But what is, has Jesus come to do? He has come to turn the negative. He has come. He said the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. She turned negativism. She was an orphan. And very often orphans are abused. She was a woman at a time when women were disrespected and disregarded. Thirdly, she was a Jew and their people would hate the guts of those Jews. So her, her, her situation was one of negativism. But because there is a cause, she rose to the occasion and turn things. Folks, do me here. 
God has us here for a purpose. You're not just here for your good looks. You're not just here to make up numbers. You're not just here just to pump a set and show yourself. We are agents of change. Things need to be turned around. Some people, they have this thing that they attend. They say, look, so I ban, so I make me, so I stop. Make you are sin. This is my favorite. Don't let the words, words come out of your mouth. If they ever attempt to rebuke them in the name of Jesus, say what the word says. Lord, we, we prayed it just now. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength. And she turned things. Let's move to the next one. She reversed what was meant for evil. You hear me? From potential slaughter. They Haman intended to slaughter all the Jews in, in all the, the provinces of Shushan. He intended to slaughter them all. But we see the thing called Purim. The Jews celebrate it today. Every year when they celebrate Purim, Purim, they quote the whole book of Esther from chapter 1 to chapter 10 right down to the end. And they, because Purim, which meant for the word casting lots, that is what happened. The things changed. The, the Jews rose up and took advantage of their enemy. Folks, do me a favor. In God's book, whoso diggeth a pit shall fall in it. You don't sit down and let people stone that they say and begin to, oh God, brother, brother, you can't know how to move. Oh God, I know what I'm sick on top. Me, you hear, oh Lord. Man. Stop feeling for, sorry for yourself. God is with God in you at work. You can reverse what Satan intended for evil. Things may have been said against you. Things may have been done. Not in your favor. But... Look at what happened in Esther. Through an orphan girl, the thing was reversed. I start to shout yet. Go on. You assess what you're up against. And this is a, prob a thing. Assessing has to do with, it's a little intellectual exercise. Because you have to take a look at what, what exists, examine it, look at pros and cons, to know, you see if you don't do it, you're going to live in denial. And Christianity is not about living in denial. If you come from a situation where you are poverty stricken, if you come from a situation where illiteracy just simply walk all over you, admit it so you can rise from it. You see, if you don't admit it, then they say you fall in the category of he who knows not, knows not that he knows not. But assess the situation. Some people thought that, that, that um, what's her name? Esther was probably trying to dance around Mordecai. Because when Mordecai told her what is going to happen, and he, she said to him, listen, but no one can go before the king, you know, except if you, he, he extends his scepter towards you. Mordecai says, yes, I know that. She was, ex she was assessing the situation. Even though she was queen, she couldn't just bolt into the king's presence. It's important to us to understand where you're at. Christians, and do me a favor, this comes about by reading, assessing, analyzing. Let's go to the next one. She assessed it. She had a new name. And I want you, you, may, you may smile at this. You and I have a new identity. She was called in Hebrew, Hadassah. And Hadassah meant a myrtle tree. I mean, flourishing myrtle tree. But they changed her name to Esther, which the Persian meant a star. A planet, Venus the planet. So, let me allow you a chance to let that marinate. God, yes, he establishes a tree, the planting of the Lord. But when he's doing his transition, he's moving from just a mere tree into position what? 
a planet. Woohoo! That didn't resonate to you yet? Boy, yo, yo. Then, think about it. So, not that we are dumb. Hadassah, a lovely name, a lovely Hebrew name. It meant a, a myrtle tree. But to Esther, a star, Venus, the planet. Boy, yo, yo. Yes. That's how God sees you. That's how he looks at you. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. And that old Negro spiritual that we just saying, nobody knows the trouble that I see. Nobody knows my son. <laughs> Do me a favor. When you're crying, you don't cry alone. God has done marvelous things. It's time for us to stand, not with yourself, but it's time for us to stand and say, look what the Lord has done for me. Look what he has done. Transitioning. Hey, yes, they will call us all kind of names, but they always a new name. A new name. It's written in glory. So, it's written in glory, you know. But even here, understand the effects. As you transition, we got to change our perspective, change our attitude, change our feeling that oh, I'm going down there this Saturday, you know, this Sunday to hear what they have to say. But no, sir, you are an integral part of God's plan. The next one, status. Your status has changed from an orphan, a little orphan girl, to queen. And queen of where? Queen of an empire. And this empire, Mark, you know, we ain't talk about Massey and C.K. Grace, you know. Yeah. Queen of 127 provinces from Kush, which was then Ethiopia, to India. Picture that. It was then the dump, an orphan girl. That's a place when you and I should be saying, Oh, yo, yo, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. You see, do my favor. If we are preaching and only, I'm only here, I caught in sin and Satan, I son down. And I'll allow you to bring all your fornicate itself. Come repent in the name of Jesus. And when I done a baptize, you wipe out, pow, one sit down there. When I preach, you just say amen. If that's all you're here to do, do my favor. Let's, let's close up shop and go home. We are procuring a people for God. We are shaping a people. We are molding and fashioning a people. It's a new name written down in glory and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. The angels are seeing it. They're recognizing it. Your name. And God knows you by your name. And he has given you a new status. Or some of you prefer to say status, whichever. You know, split it. Yes. You gotta insist. Do me a favor. It's a, it's Israel's just give up, and that's one of our weakness, gentlemen. I said talking to the lady, but come to our side. Some of us get too too quick, You're quick to stupidity. Insist. Mordecai overheard two men planning to assassinate King. In the King James, he's called Ahasuerus. His Persian name is Xerxes. So if it says Hasteros Xerxes, he's not two people, the same person. They, he heard these two people planning to assassinate King Xerxes. And he went and he told Esther. Esther went and told the king. The king examined the situation and by all evidence, it was so. So they hang the two men. The information, the information was written down in a book and put away in the shelf. And read the text. Shortly after that, the king said, okay, I want to establish a new prime minister. And he looked up. A pump, a certain man called Haman. All right? He gave Haman his ring and so Haman will stamp his documents, bam, bam, send them out in his name. 
Mordecai, who saved the king's life, is still sitting in the shadows. Now, pause for a moment. How do you contextualize that and how do you apply that? Many of us have done things where you've made other people's lives more comfortable, better. You've gone through transit, yes. But like the men in the prison with Joseph, when they come out of prison, they forget him. <laughs> That's life. No, when you go sit and say, you see it, are you? <laughs> not a soul, not bad, ever tap me. Not a, not, not a dog. Yo, don't worry, this long, okay, I can't sit, no, this isn't church. <laughs> <laughs> but brother Mark, you know, right? Me and you know, all right. <laughs> but listen, Mordecai informed Esther. Esther informed the king. The king examined the matter. It is discovered to be true. They found the two men. They brought them to justice. They hung them. And the information was put in a book. Close the book. And on the chair, bam. End of story. But not when there's a, there's a God who superintends the affairs. And he looks out for the affairs of his children. He knows what's going on. He knows when you're overlooked. He knows when you've been ignored. He knows when you've done good and sometimes evil just slapped in your face. He sees it. And this is why we must be intentional with our lives. Don't go through that feeling. Nobody knows. No, no, no. Oh man, this is not time. They, he, she ins, they, there was insistence taking place in this transform, transitioning stage. What is the other one? Talk about it. Talk about it. Listen, if you can get chapter 8 of Esther verse 15, all right? And you could just, I'll be grateful. Whatever version. Chapter 8, 15. Talk about it. All right? I remember when, as a little boy running around in pause, let him go to Sunday school. They taught us this story, this song. Tell me the story of Jesus. I love to hear things I would ask him, things I would ask to tell me if he would. Woo, man, he's by the wayside, tales of the sea, stories of Jesus, tell them to me. First, let me... Okay, let me stop now. All right, you find it yet? You gonna find Esther eight fifteen? All right. When you get a chance, you read it. Talk about it. Talk about what the Lord, what God has done in your life. Tell others. Tell them the good news. Tell them, look at what the Lord has done for me. Tell them what brought it about. All right. Oh, there it goes. So Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in the royal apparel of blue and white. That was kingly garment, eh? Um, royal garment. With a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city in Shushan rejoiced and was glad. When people hear what God has done for you, when people see what God has done for you, yes, they'll be glad. Some may want to throw a little spasm here and there, but they'll be glad. Yes. Not some of my former neighbor in Glen. And the Lord, the Lord has done wonderful things for me. Amen. Thanks be to God. His gifts are unspeakable. His blessings, they make rich and they add no sorrow. Give us the next one before the congregation fall asleep. And you get that. Intercepting the enemy's plan. <laughs> Man, that's what God has you here for. He said, when the, 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 the princes, this is Ezekiel 22 now, when the, the, the princes, referring to the politicians, were doing all kinds of foolishness, and the prophets were darbing it with untempered mortar, that's a fancy way of saying they were whitewashing the wickedness of the politicians. The priests were putting no difference between the 
the good and the evil. So they're mixing up kind of color, low religion. They're they teaching good, bad, and all kind of things as one. Then the people started exercising robbery. And the scripture says, God said, I search for a man who would make up the hedge, stand in the gap, so that my judgment would not come upon such a people. He said, but I found none. You and I are here as interceptors. And I've drawn this example to you already. And let me just before, don't change this yet. But just let me say this by example. When God was angry with his own people, Israel, and they were doing all kind of foolishness. You see, they were not transitioning well. So God said, look, look, I'm going to remove these people from my presence. And I'm going to raise up a people, a new people. <laughs> Moses was there. He said, Moses, move. Moses, move. And I'm being here. Not irreverent. You hear me? But Moses stood between God and people. And he's saying, move, move to go away. <laughs> and Duffy, your grandmother, when she was vexed, and she said, talk to Bill. Anytime you see, she talk to, bite your tongue, look out of trouble. And could you imagine, I'm saying this lovingly because God understands I'm still in this flesh. So you don't worry that. You're not going to knock me down. God said, look, Moses, move. And Mo Ma Moses said, wait. Move to go away. Move. Let me wipe these people out. And Mo Moses, really? So when you don't wipe them out. What am I going to say of your great name to the enemy? And God said, all right, all right, leave them. We are interceptors. You see, if people realize our purpose here, our purpose here, I don't have time to make confusion with you, my brother, my sister. No. I don't have time to get into all kind of messages and millennials. Tra -la -la -tac 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 -tac. I must be an interceptor. A game changer. It's time for us to say to the devil, move, Satan. Remove your hands. Oh, Lord God, hold your hands. You are an interceptor. That's what this young lady understood. All right? And you see this one? Obedience. We, many, when many of us left Sunday school, we left that word there. Obedience is the very best thing to show that you believe. Obedience. The word we prefer today is compliance. All right. Same difference. But this young lady, when she was in the care of her cousin Mordecai because her parents died, she obeyed him. And when she went in to the king's harem, he was there guiding her. And she was obeying him all. Even when she became queen. Because even when she was queen. And he said to her. Esther. Your life is in danger. Do this. Do that. Do that. I told you before. Not to show your identity. She didn't do it. Obediently. When the time came and she discovered the Haman, that wicked Haman was doing. All right? He wanted to, because Mordecai would not bow to him, he wanted to wipe them off. Can you picture that? But Esther kept that obedient spirit. Let me plug in something here. I don't know what happened with some people that when some of us get a little position, the nice way we say it, it gets to our head. Vincentians had a way of saying it. But it don't sound too nice in the pulpit, so I'm going to say it. You hear me? But believe you me, when some people get in a little position, they cannot be spoken to anymore. When some people acquire a little title, they become too big for their boots. Not in this woman who understood 
the value of transitioning. She, while an orphan, was obeying. She's queen and still she functions with obedience. Brother, sister, let me check out. Let me check out ourselves. The next one, non-compromising. Well, you know that is not the case, John. When Haman walked with his pump set himself, and he looked down, and there was Mordecai. Everybody's born Mordecai would not bow because Mordecai understood that there's only one to whom you bow, and that's God Almighty. And but that infuriated him, and he, look, every time he saw him, you must check the text three five is there. All right, he would not bow, but you know. In transitioning, no compromise. No compromise. They incorporated God's people. And this way, God understand. Look what Esther did. When she heard what Haman was planning, she said to Mordecai, Go ask all the people. Let me call her fast. Nobody eat nothing. I and my maids will also fast. She incorporated all in fasting, which implies they were praying. Mark you. Praying is not mentioned, but it's implied. And in Purim 926, she's, look, she said to all the Jews, wherever you are, declare this day a day of victory. So you got to incorporate. Let me tell you something. If God blesses me, my dear sister, I can't come and take the blessing and stick it in my pocket. And I'm, I'm going about business. No, man. I am part of a family. I'm a part of the people of God. When God downloads his truth in my spirit, my brother, <laughs> I, I have to tell it. I can't keep quiet. Like Jeremiah. His word was in my bones like a fire. Like a, I can't keep quiet. You incorporate God's people. And I know you want to know, brother. For took when with his long pants, so I'm going to finish. What the next one be? <laughs> now that. Woo! <laughs> now the time. <clears throat> if I perish. I perish. Listen, some of us need to develop some, 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 some belly. Ban your belly in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Satan will not put his hand here on this one. No. Not in my house. Not on my marriage. Not on my children. Look, listen. If you perish, perish. But he's not going to do it. And I think this is the last one. Boom. Hit the door, he says. God is providentially at work. His signature is all over. Ah, God is at work. Listen, while Mordecai is having a restless night, while Esther is wondering, oh my gosh, what is going to happen? While Haman is pampersetting with his wife and, all, and his, his ten sons and all the people, tell them, listen man, hey, look what I've done. <laughs> look what's going to happen to me. And and he's wondering what's happening. Oh, God is disturbing the king's dreams. Now, tell me this coincidence. He disturbed the king's dream. The king can't sleep. He got up. He went to the books. He's a king. He had plenty of books at his disposal. He went exactly to the record. You understand? When he pulled the book and he opened with, eh, eh, how would they say that be? Two men planned to assassinate me. And the, the, the information was told to by the So wait, what have we done to that guy? And somebody put down there, not a blessed thing. <laughs> Let you know that the sermon done. Let me shut the book. <laughs> Watch. God is providentially 
And the word may sound long and fanciful, but he is superintending the affairs of men. Your life is not at the women's fancy. God is overlooking what's happening. So just drop the, the, the spreadsheet. Look at it, that is spreadsheet. You see what we're talking about? That's the whole thing of transitioning. Me ain't gonna give a synopsis on a synopsis because you're gonna go, you're gonna take too long. But that's what it is. He was superintending the affairs. God is looking over. Now do me a favor, whatever stage you're in, whatever state you're in, my brother, my sister, rise up in the name of Jesus and go forth. Go forth. We as a people can't keep sitting down feeling sorry for ourselves. Oh God. My mama been doing my mama been this. My papa been this. My father, oh God. You know, see me uncle was this and me. No man. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Rise up, oh men and women of God. He is providentially looking over. And that fancy thing is called transition. Because here what it says. He it is he who watches over you to will and to do of his good. Amen. Amen.